You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am Chase Senior, and we kick off today's show with, well, talking about injuries. And yes, I understand everybody has grown so tired about talking about injuries, but they continue to be a problem for this organization. So much so that Kyle Shanahan said yesterday in Santa Clara that we are eliminating and ending OTAs. There's going to be no veteran minicamp as well. And the next time the 49ers will gather, late in July for training camp. So the 49ers deciding to cancel the rest of OTAs and next week's veteran minicamp. This after the injury bug hit them really hard this week when Tavarius Moore went down with the torn Achilles and Justin School went down with the torn ACL. And going back to last year in 2020 when the 49ers were the most injury ravaged team across the entire NFL, injuries once again an issue and a problem for this franchise that does have Super Bowl aspirations if they can have their main key pieces stay healthy and upright this season. Here's some injuries that have already happened. Uh, Jeff Wilson, torn meniscus. That is what he suffered in the locker room when he simply got up off of his chair. Tavarius Moore, safety. He was competing for starting reps alongside Jimmy Ward because Jaquiski Tart is out. Tore his Achilles in a non-contact drill. He was just running on the practice field and his Achilles popped. Justin School, on the other hand, tore his ACL the same day as Moore. Both of those injuries occurring on Monday when he was doing a pass blocking set. Moore and School expected to be lost for the rest of the season. Those guys not penciled in as starters but very important depth pieces on this team that's going to be looking to compete for the NFC West title and make a run at another Super Bowl, which would be their second Super Bowl appearance in three years. When you talk about these injuries, so many people are saying, fire the training staff, change the grass at the practice facility in Santa Clara. I just can't kind of wrap my head around what's going on right now, and I'm trying to measure whether or not it is bad luck versus bad practices. Because the injury rate in football is at 100%. Every single player who takes the field is bound to get injured at some point. But you also weigh that with the fact that is this training staff not doing the right things to have these guys in a position where they can stay healthy for a long period of time? David Lombardi of The Athletic dove deep into the subject matter, and I thought his article on The Athletic was absolutely fascinating. So let's break it down right here. The 49ers fired head trainer Jeff Ferguson and strength coach Ray Wright following an injury marred 2018 season. They hired Ben Peterson, the former director of sports science for the NHL's Philadelphia Flyers, shortly after that. Peterson has overseen both the medical and training sides of the team's operation since, a setup that the 49ers have hoped would increase cohesion between the two components that are obviously connected to player health. Monday's bad news is yet another chapter in what's been a vexing injury problem for coach Kyle Shanahan's team. According to Football Outsiders, adjusted games lost formula, which weighs the impact of specific injuries with advanced statistics, the 49ers were the NFL's most injured team in 2020. That is why the faithful is so fed up with these injuries that continue to surface and take away a lot of key players from the roster because they're going down left and right. So write your level of concern with the 49ers injuries for me right now in the comment section down below, given that Moore and School have both gone out with serious injuries and are expected to be lost for the rest of the season. Scale it for me down below from 1 to 10. Because the 49ers canceled OTAs, they're not getting back together as an entire team until late July during training camp. And what do you know? If you're trying to look fresh this summer, look fresh for the upcoming NFL season, training camp hats are now on sale thanks to our friends at Fanatics. A couple of different combinations in terms of colors, the gray one, the black one, you can even go flat brim bill like Kyle Shanahan does and be all swaggy like Shanny. Go to chatsports.com slash Niners hats and you can get a deal on one of these 49ers training camp hats right now. I'll be sure to put this link in the description as well as the comments if you're not watching us live here on the 49ers report. Speaking of injuries, when is D4 going to be able to come back and be an impactful player for the 49ers? It's been a while. He missed all of 2020 due to back and neck issues. Also underwent a knee procedure last offseason. So this is a guy who, when he's right, one of the best edge rushers across the entire league. But... Man, he's been off the field way too often for the 49ers, especially when you consider that after the 49ers traded for him in that deal with the Kansas City Chiefs, they paid him $85 million 
for five years, and he's played in only 12 games over the last two seasons. Kyle Shanahan is very hopeful that D. Ford coming back from those neck, back, and knee injury issues is going to be ready at some point around training camp, and that would give this defensive line a massive boost. Here's what Kyle Shanahan had to say in Santa Clara this week. He made a lot of progress in the months that he was rehabbing here. We knew we weren't going to put him through OTAs because we don't want his back to act up, so I'm just keeping my fingers crossed, and I'm hoping he can come ready to go in training camp, and hopefully he can help us out this year. D Ford's going to be able to give this defensive line a boost, especially being that mean rusher on the edge, if he'll be able to stay healthy. And when he is healthy, one of the best pass rushers in the game. Going back to 2018, he was miraculous with the Kansas City Chiefs. 55 tackles, 18 tackles for loss, 13 sacks, as well as seven forced fumbles. Those figures atop the charts in the NFL that year. And even though in 2019, after he was playing his first year in the scarlet, red, white, and gold, D. Ford only played 11 games because of the aforementioned injuries, but in that short amount of time, he was still a very impactful player. 14 tackles, eight tackles for loss, seven sacks in 11 games is a really elite number, and was also disruptive in the backfield as well and really just causing havoc from sideline to sideline able to contribute two forced fumbles as well so Kyle Shanahan very hopeful that D Ford is going to be back at some point during training camp do you think he's going to be a big contributor this upcoming season I'm setting the over under at sacks for D Ford at five where are you going with this let me know in the comment section down below type O for you think D Ford is going to have more than five sacks type U for under Right now, I'm going to go ahead and type my U for under because I don't think D Ford is going to be able to stay healthy when a powerful physical edge rusher is coming off back and neck issues and you're expecting him to also come back from that knee injury as well. Taking the over for five sacks is pretty high for me. I just want to see this guy on the field upright and healthy during training camp and preseason before I make a prediction like that. So here at Chat Sports on some of our signature shows, we have rumor meters. For instance, Mitchell Renz does a great job on the Raiders report, and the rumor meter for the Raiders channel is Chucky Heads. Heads of John Gruden. Harrison Graham on Chicago Bears Now has smoking Jay Cutler's. It's a picture of Jay Cutler smoking a cigarette. Here on the 49ers report today, we are introducing the Shanna Hats rumor meter. Here's how it all breaks down. Zero Shanna hats with a rumor, I'm going to tell you all to just chill. There is no validity at all to that. One Shanna hat, I'm intrigued but somewhat doubtful about the rumors that are surfacing. Two Shanna hats, people are talking and there's a possibility that that rumor could come to fruition. Three Shanna hats, eh, pretty likely. And four Shanna hats, light the candlestick, let's celebrate because this rumor is going to ring true and it is going to happen. So with that, let's pivot to this. There's been a lot of buzz about Mohamed Sanu claiming the wide receiver three spot during OTAs. And he's drawing a lot of buzz with how he's come to camp, how he looks big, physical, fast, and ready to go. NBC Sports Bay Area has been talking a lot about this. And the 49ers wide receiver three battle is going to be one of the more intriguing competitions in training camp. So with this rumor, I am going to give this three Shanna hats with Mohamed Sanu claiming that wide receiver three spot. A lot of guys going to be in the mix for that role behind Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. Those guys include Travis Benjamin, Jalen Hurd, Richie James, Jawan Jennings, Austin Watkins, the UDFA out of UAB has gotten some early compliments as well. But does Mohamed Sanu have the inside track at the wide receiver three spot? Obviously, 49ers fans very familiar with him. Spent last year with the 49ers and throughout his career, especially when he paired up with Kyle Shanahan with the Atlanta Falcons. He was one of the better playmaking wide receivers across the league. Mike McDaniel, offensive coordinator for the Niners, who is looked at as a young up-and-coming whiz kid, had this to say about Sanu. He's raving about him so far during OTAs. Quote, you can tell that he doesn't expect anything to be given to him, and he's trying to earn his spot on this team. So it was very exciting to see him perform. He's doing very well, and if he comes back to training camp in that same shape, he's going to be a guy that is going to be tough to beat out for that final 53-man roster spot. Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, to me, are two of the best playmakers at the wide receiver spot across the NFL, and both of those guys are capable of playing on the outside. Mohamed Sanu on the other end, I think he's going to be able to factor in really nicely in the slot 
And he's going to be a perfect complement to Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk and give this offense, whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo pulling the trigger and dropping dimes or Trey Lance, some versatility. And I also like Mohamed Sanu's experience, too. He has no fear at all when it comes to getting involved in the blocking game as well. And in Kyle Shanahan's outside zone scheme, he does rely upon wide receivers to get downfield and block. And Mohamed Sanu has shown the propensity to do that throughout his NFL career. So I do think Sanu is a good complement to Ayuk and Samuel. I'm giving it three Shanna hats that it's somewhat likely to happen that he claims that wide receiver three spot. And that is a training camp battle that I can't wait to see happen. So will Sanu make the 53-man roster? This is your opportunity to chime in and let your opinions be known here on the show. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Get your votes in in the comment section down below. A few more news items we want to hit before we round out this segment. NFL has released its preseason dates, and we know where the 49ers are playing and when. They're going to take on the Kansas City Chiefs in their preseason opener on August 14th at 8.30 Eastern. Los Angeles Chargers, after they practice together all week, taking place August 23rd, 7.30 Eastern, and then the 49ers will round out their preseason against the hated Las Vegas Raiders on August 29th to get ready for the regular season, 4 o'clock Eastern kickoff for that one. 49ers were also penalized by the NFL today, according to Tom Pelissero of the NFL Network. Nothing too extraordinary or crazy, but according to Tom Pelissero, the NFL docked the 49ers for a violation of off-season work rules during rookie training camp. It was an infraction that was flagged due to a social media post, I believe that was put out there by the team account. And it's unclear what exactly the penalty is, whether it's a fine, if draft compensation is taken away from the 49ers, but the 49ers docked because of a rules infraction. Pelissero also added in a tweet that, it wasn't like a horrible rule that was broken, but the NFL rules are very strict. So there you go with that one. For the best 49ers coverage here on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as we inch closer and closer to 36,000 subscribers as we continue to grow the faithful family here on the channel. We're hitting you with the latest news and rumors. We give you free videos every single day. We do mailbags as well. We go live every single Thursday, 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Pacific. So either go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV and hit that red subscribe button or right below me there is a red subscribe button as well. Smash that as well. Let's get to 36,000 subscribers because more subscribers equals more videos. And also, I appreciate you all showing me love since I took over on the 49ers report about a month ago.